Okay, uh, it is 631 on Tuesday, January 10th. I'd like to call to order um, the meeting of the Village of Woodstock Board of Trustees. Um, the first item on our agenda this evening is citizen comments. Are there any citizen comments? Beth? <laughs> no. <laughs> the only person in the room? Okay. Then we will move on to additions to and deletions from the posted agenda. Are there any additions or deletions? Okay, I'm going to make one edit. Um, under old business, we've got town manager goals and objectives listed as number three. I'd like to move that up to number one um, because Bill and Gabe have been working on that and Bill has to leave a little early. So we'll move that up to the first spot. As long as that's okay with the rest of the trust. Mm -hmm. That's good. Next is the manager's report. Manager. Yeah, just a brief report. Um, yeah, this doesn't affect you guys, but it kind of does. The select board finalized the their budget today uh, and their the sewer budget. So, what, what what's the tax rate increase? Uh, it's five percent. Five percent. Yeah, they went down below us. Uh, it might have dropped a little bit because we found uh, a, a pretty large uh, air and like about a thirty thousand dollar one. Oh wow! And we had uh, an additional fighter in there that we didn't need. Um, oh, in your favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So it did drop it down. This five. You know, I think you guys are five point one. We're so. five point two, so we were. Yeah. On a competition, Jeffrey. No, no it's, <laughs> it's just, good to be comparable. It is, yeah. yes, and yeah. it is comparable. Yeah, yeah. Um, that and we are uh, interviewing for the uh, replacement person in the highway department. Okay. So I have. Okay, great. And and uh, you're interviewing, meaning you actually have candidates. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yes. Good. Good. <clears throat> it's gonna snow someday. Fingers crossed. Oh, man. Likely will. <laughs> hope so. Yeah, let's hope so. Is right. Better not be June. We'll have it in April. Uh, okay, and anything else? No. no. Okay. Uh, next is police chief's report. He's on vacation. There you go. Yeah. That's okay. We'll let him go on vacation. Uh, okay. Well, then we can hear from Robbie another time. Okay, uh, next on the agenda is permits. Uh, we have sidewalk permits, grade permits, and use of green permits, all by the Chamber of Commerce. So Beth, why don't you come up into the hot seat and talk to us about, uh, let's start with the, the sidewalk sale in May and then the sidewalk sale in August. <clears throat> Please tell us your name for the record. Um, Beth Finlay, Chamber Director. Um, Yes, I've asked for, we've asked for um, permits for use of the sidewalk for May, I figure out the dates. Um, Six and 27. Yeah, Memorial Day, Friday and Saturday, the 26th and 27th for sidewalk sales, as well as um, August 18th and 18th and 19th. Again, for the end of summer, summer. So both Fridays and Saturdays. Yes. School's not in session yeah. by the 18th, right? No. 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 Okay. Um, and how many places do you anticipate participating? The businesses that choose to participate, what we do is ask for the use of the sidewalk for those two days. Um, you know, if it looks like it's going to rain, people will set a tent out, but leave space for people to be able to walk underneath. So it's mostly the downtown business district. Um, I think that usually, um, usually, uh, Woodstock Sports participates, but they they don't fall under this permit because they have their own driveway. So it's people that have uh, sidewalk frontage. I move that we uh, accept it for the application for the sidewalk sales in May and August as presented. Exactly. Okay. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Bill. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yep. Motion carries. And Beth, I'm going to uh, 
Robbie just jumped on. I want to okay. make sure that I get him real quick. Sure. Um, that's Absolutely fine. Okay. Uh, Robbie, do you want to take us through the police report? Yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't okay? realize you were there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I was having trouble connecting. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, real quick. So we part uh, we participated in the holiday DUI campaign uh, over the uh, Christmas holiday for Governor's Highway Safety. Um, I anticipate filling the vacancy in February for the uh, police officer's position. I'll introduce. I mean, we can't hear you very well. He he dropped off. Oh wait, he might be coming back. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna you hear me now. I'm gonna take myself off the video, man. Okay, that should help. Okay. Um, in any case, uh, I don't know where I left off, but I anticipate filling the police officer's vacancy in February, and I'll introduce the officer, the new officer, um, and then at that time, at the next February meeting, I just have a couple of things to do to just finalize that hiring. One of them being talking to Tom, of course. So, um, meter revenue. So in uh, December, uh, we had fourteen thousand nine hundred two dollars and sixty cents. In meter revenue uh, compared to $12,634.95 back in 2021. So we had a, a couple thousand dollar increase in meter revenues. And for the first time. Okay, we've lost you again. We heard the meter revenue, but nothing since. Sorry, where did I leave you? you? You left us with, you gave us the figures for 2022 and 2021 for meter revenue, and then we kind of lost you thereafter. Okay, I apologize. Uh, Park Mobile outpaced everything for the month of December for the first time. It's $5,527.20 in revenue. Just that was the first time I was in the past. That was interesting. With all the attendants, they're used to that kind of the parking app. So it really worked out well to have that. That's really great. That's good news, and we've lost you again, but we did hear that Park yeah. Mobile outpaced oh, yeah. the other two uh, elements for the first time. Wow. And that's, uh, in a nutshell, that's my report. <laughs> so, <laughs> before I lose you again. Yeah, right. Well, well, go back and have a good time on vacation, Robbie. All right, I'll be, I'll be back Thursday, all right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, safe Thanks. travels. All uh, right, thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Beth. I continue. Let Robbie jump in real quick. Uh, okay, so next item is parade permits, wassail parade, and horse drawn wagon rides, and taste of Woodstock. So we're re requesting the same um, horse, horse parade as we have had in the past starting at the east end of the village on the green, back down to the east end of the village. Um, and also um, we are looking to do wagon rides through the village Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It was well received, not only on Saturday, but Friday for sure and, and Sunday as something else to do in town. The same hours, same Yes. Time. The only problem is that horses can only Horses and their drivers can go X hours, yeah, you know, without getting thirsty and hungry and grumpy. So, you know, we we have to just have it for a three to four hour. Okay. And I did notice this year that that sort of that became a very congested area. Did the horses have any problem with that, or did people have any problems with that? Just as as rides were being picked up, there was just that there was obviously a huge line, and then sort of getting around traffic seemed to be a little tricky. 
Um, we had a couple people at the station there. We had volunteers there the whole time. Um, you know, so they had to stop traffic to let the horses out. Yeah. And then kind of stop them again to let the horses back in. But I didn't have complaints about okay, it, I don't good. think. But, um, you know, it does take at least two people there. Okay. Got it. Um, and then Taste of Woodstock um, for August is August 12th. Um, we would like to do the same thing. We're working with Jim Yeager and looking to have um, bigger and better music. So music, food, and fun. So, and it does get congested. It gets very congested. What and what sort of the, so with both of these, although we'll maybe talk about it a little bit more with Wasail, is the the parking gets tricky. Oh, this year, I, I will tell you. <laughs> I will tell you for the Taste of Woodstock, we are looking for some sponsorship, okay. so that we can hire a probably a small bus, and have people park up at the high school, just because it got very challenging. We found this year. Um, the taste. Um, the wassail is a whole different kettle of fish. What happened was we had two buses and that's generally been, took care of everything. And they could go in the back way, go down by the elementary school, come in the back way, drop off at the welcome center and leave that way. So they weren't really stuck in traffic. And uh, we didn't know that the bus people changed buses to the big buses. Um. And at first we heard that there was no, uh, there were no more shuttles and people were walking on route four. And then we saw the yellow school buses and they were stopping where it, it was rather a nightmare. Um, I'm working with Robbie and the bus company. We're gonna talk about maybe four little buses okay. instead of going to large buses because then they- Constant pickups and drop offs. Or, that we drop off at the covered bridge on the backs on River Street, go around and back out so that they never have to hit the congestion. The congestion. Um, so we're, we have not had a meeting about, you know, what the snafus this year and what, what will go for next year. Because what were they dropping off before on the side of the end? They drop, no, they drop off at the Welcome Center. Oh. And they were able to go around and sneak out the back way again and back up by the Episcopal Church and out. But once they got the big buses, they couldn't maneuver through there. Okay. One, one thing to keep in mind this year, which wasn't available last summer for Taste of Woodstock, is the use of the elementary school parking lot. Right. And that should be made known. So yes, we definitely will. We actually yeah. discussed that at the market on the green meeting today okay. for vendors. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, how many spaces is that? It's like 30, 30 something. 30 something. Okay. I mean, we really, it was very congested uh, for the taste of Woodstock. It was, yeah. And so we thought we might, you know, if we can find the right sponsor, um, shuttle. From the high school again. Okay, and and just the people in that area. Is there does does Robbie or David give you a cap of how many people can be in that area? In what area? In the actual like Taste of Woodstock area where the vendors are and the music. No, as long as we keep one side open, always open, so that an ambulance and or fire truck could get down. So we generally keep the um, east side of Elm Street, you know, open enough so that cars could get through. Okay. We can fit 50 or more, you know, but we want to leave room for the chalk it up and yeah. for that kind of thing. So. It seemed more crowded this year. It was, it was yeah. great. Okay. Good. Um, Phil, do you have any questions about either of those? No, sounds wonderful. I say that Beth always does a great job and we appreciate your 
trustees? No. I, I make a motion to accept the parade permits okay. for Taste of Woodstock and Block. I just want to make sure there's no citizen comments. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Can't see anybody. Well, I, I'm making that motion, and I assume that all of the the fees have been paid. Yes. Insurance and insurance. I saw insurance in here. Yeah. Okay. So I make that motion. I second. Okay. All in favor, uh, say aye. 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 Any, aye. Opposed? Any opposed? Motion carries. I hate to even say this, but there are no fees for per, uh, for permits for parades. Not for parades, right? Yeah. Right. I didn't mention for the first. But let's see. Mm. Moving on. Next item is uh, use of green permits for Wassail Weekend, Market on the Green, and Art Festival. Take those one at a time. Those are all big things. Okay, so first is Wassail Weekend. This bill, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, so what this is is a letter of support uh, for added activities on the green from Susie Curtis, who owns, and just some Googling that we did for Christmas markets. Um, we found a really beautiful photo at one point of beautiful, just white tents like every we all have, only they were all tied together with lit um, garland. And it just made it cohesive and very pretty as opposed to haphazard. Um, just a quick, Phil, um, Beth just handed out a, a letter to us. I just took yeah. a picture of it and texted it to you so you can look at the same thing. You're so kind, thank you. You're welcome. And we'll make sure this gets into the packet. So other yeah, that's fine, yeah. Okay. So in, in regards to this, this part of the permit, um, Beth and I had a conversation uh, well, earlier to see this late this afternoon. I had one with Kim Smith this afternoon, who is board of directors. Um, and one of the big problems last year, maybe mm -hmm. one, uh, for Wassel, with the crowds that we had, and by the way, we don't know what's going to happen this coming year because it, all this talk of recession, we don't know if it's going to be as massive a crowd as this year. But regardless of that, um, uh, we did not have enough food service as the biggest problem that I heard comments from that and the parking. More than anything else in terms of negativity, I mean, people ha had a wonderful time, but there were also a lot, I, ne I never heard as many negative comments regarding food service as I did um, from the public during the event, during that day. Um, and so um, I, I urged Beth to see if given some more time, we could get more of a mix in that tent of food merchants and, uh, and leave the artisans in, but limit them to a maximum of eight, which is the maximum allowed for the market on the green, by the way. Um, and um, so, uh, uh, and then in addition, there's going to be a meeting of all the downtown merchants, both chamber members and non-chamber members on January 25th, this month. And we're gonna discuss a bunch of things, but there will be feedback from more than one merchant that you have here. Um, and so my suggestion is that just this section of this permit be uh, not voted on until the February meeting, giving a chance to see if more food vendors can be gained and to, and to hear feedback from the business district. Well, this already has food vendors on it, so it's not anything that would change. No, not not as a friend. Right. To see, to give a chance to see if Beth had to have a different number of booths in mind to see if there's a chance to gain more food vendors in the tent. If I, if I could just share two things. One is that I did bring the minutes to our meeting um, the board voted unanimously yesterday to support an artisan's market on the green and Kim um, I did talk with her after I spoke with Jeffrey 
who asked um, that the chamber schedule a merchant's meeting like we've done in the past to discuss issues that we all have, nothing to do with the permit, just to get together to connect. We decided on January 25th, um, it, it, in her mind, it had nothing to do with the permit. Okay. And that it, she just sent this to It me had to do with- 6.30. Okay. Well, so I'm, 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 well, I, I say I move that we just put this off for one month, but one of the purposes of meeting gather information about all sorts of things, including events that occur in, in the village, such as this. And if we just put it, put it onto February's schedule, I don't see as that be a problem. It actually, I don't know what time. information we're missing though. Well, I'll try to explain to you again. No, I mean, this so. Gives, I, I mean, I'm getting very frustrated with the reason I'm asking for it to just put it off for one month is to A, give time to see if we can find more food vendors as that's the biggest problem that existed. And to see if there's feedback from the business district. How will that affect this application, which includes food vendors? So there will be, this doesn't have a number on it. But well, Beth has, Beth has, she didn't delineate that, but she had numbers, she has numbers. Um, I mean, I'd like to have up to 25 vendors on the green. Now, currently, um, we have had the Wassel Bar. Yeah. We've had the Rotary Club because they do so much of the green, you know, the, we've had Women of the Woods who prepared as much food as they could possibly serve. Um, Steve Bauer and Naughty Coffee on the green, as well as Lucy McKenzie and High Horses because they are integral parts of the parade. What I'd like to do is to expand beyond that to an artisan's market. It can be up to eight artisans. I'm meaning craft people versus I mean, we have four alcohol purveyors who would like to come. All Vermont, look, alcohol so alcohol people. Alcohol for consumption there? Or no, like not for consumption, for tasting and bottles. Okay, so they would be more, so they're not they're food vendors. vendors. They are artisan vendors. Because they're not really selling food to be consumed. Right no, there. they're not okay. selling anything to be consumed there. Okay. And so on top of that, you know, prior, when we had this discussion in December, Laura White had made a commitment to be on the green. Um, she sells her, she vends it at Woody's, but you know. Who is she, I'm sorry. She's a potter. Oh, okay. She does beautiful pottery. Um, Megan Gray would like to be, um, Natalie Voorhees. Don't know them, I'm sorry. Uh, I know, <laughs> they, they, they're all part of the market on the green people. Oh, okay. Charlotte, I can't tell you her last name. She is a jeweler. Um, but they would like to come, they would pay $100. We would try to create something that was more cohesive and together as opposed to, you know, right now we space tents out so that they're separate. Maybe we would have them close together um, as I you know, put a couple photos in. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could get Anna Zampanadas to come? And I don't think so. I mean, I we would try. Try. We will try. Okay, and maybe I mean, Alex, the uh, pizza chef, the local people. We begged him to be at the Taste of Woodstock. I, I don't know. And people, <laughs> as you well know, the biggest concern in this town is our workforce. That there just are not enough people to serve in restaurants at the moment. And to bring a restaurant onto the green is an added burden. The women of the woods don't have a freestanding restaurant. They are doing this. They can take a week because they it, honest up and honest may. I mean, we've asked them. Maybe, They're people maybe that, we love. And Alex is a maybe because he did show up once on the green. Right. And this would be yeah, something I, where he would be guaranteed to a lot of people. What yeah. about the um, lady that uh, she's from like St. Johnsbury 
and she does um oh the yeah she, maybe she would yeah i'd yeah. be happy I to think she would talk be. with her she did egg rolls and yes right something she was yeah. great yeah not yeah. munchy yeah. rolls this is from they were at the uh, they were at the uh, apples and crafts apples and crafts fair. yeah very good yeah um so those are all possibilities clearly we want my bit what i heard the negativity of course was the bus um and we had phone calls and emails and facebook posting the bus which we will solve with robbie and the bus company not enough to do that there was not when people were dropped off in town they thought they could go make ornaments mm. but that's three miles out of town oh where was that oh, artistry. artistry yeah so we need to find <clears throat> an organization or someone that will do maybe something at the little theater building that's yeah. all walkable yeah um we've talked about an in to in tour walkable in town you know just um kim had talked about wreath making i don't know if that's a possibility you know we're open to all of the suggestions to make it more fun for people can we bring carolers in because i i, I, I hear find, that all the time if okay. you can find carolers we <laughs> will bring them in no because it's part it's part of what the the right. original holiday is all about right. and we don't yeah. have carolers and yeah. i hear i hear that all, yeah. year I mean, after year i i talked to artist tree three <laughs> years ago I said could you create a caroler class so you know end of september through november they take a class with their music director and then they can perform on the green. There were carolers during the earlier bustle. Yeah, there was. I know, we've had yeah, high, high school, school kids. High school kids on the sidewalk. I can't find them. <laughs> it would it mean. How about they change the world kids? They don't, they don't they can't sing. sing. <laughs> well, maybe they could if they practice. Put a bucket out, yeah. Well, no, that's, that's that's yeah. all. There all of the ideas. Let's things. go back and to there, this. And there could be more ideas too, and that's yes. one of the things I'd like to see that come out of the merchants' meeting is more ideas. I mean, I'm open to. So that's yeah, why I'd like to see I'd more activities to... on Sunday. Yeah, if you Sunday needs want to think more. Of... Well, huh? Sunday needs more activity. Yeah, I think Sunday definitely needs well, more. Let's, activity. let's look at what we've got in front of us, which is the knife, just the knife, with. If we could, oh, I would like to vote on just this section of it. Give that more time for all the reasons. Well, so it's the knife. So we're looking at: Are we saying yes or no to the knife? I'm not saying either. I'd like to vote on this at our next meeting, just for the permits of what's going on on the green. More detail and and more information on what between now and then, this next month, Beth might have more food vendors. Mm -hmm. Or this, more that, more detail of what could happen there. More, maybe another event or something. Don't you think that we're a long ways away from that? It's well, we I mean, are. I think that Beth needs time to coordinate all of that, which I think that she is more than happy. Well, in terms to of do. food vendors, though, well, uh, and that people. it's always that it's already a crunch um, oh. to get people. Um, so. I, I don't see a problem with just doing it next month. Now, what was the inn doing? The inn was doing something out on. We had, um, let me see if I recall this. There was cider, um, and I don't know if they did all this, but also some um, chestnuts. Um, was it open to the public? Yeah, it was on the front lawn. I mean, I know it was on the front lawn. Yeah, I just, it was open to the public. <laughs> and then we were also, no. and then we were also on the green. Um, Yo, you were with us on the green right. the chamber. You guys right. helped us. Okay, big so, time. So those are the two things big time. that we did. Yeah, roasted chestnuts would be fabulous to have on the green. There's all kinds of things, but popcorn balls. Hey, Beth, that smells like Christmas. Matthew, you asked me about St. James doing something. Yeah, we talked about St. James contributing something to the uh, right. weekend too, which we can talk about later. We get a little bit more detail. Uh, yeah. Also, Pentangle's house tour isn't dead. It may come back, but um, oh, that would be fabulous, Bill. Yeah, it's not definite, but we're kicking it around, so uh, we have to get back to Beth on that. And you guys too, I guess. That was very successful. The house yeah, it is. House tour is really popular. Yeah. That would so, be a good event. 
more more to bring up. Thanks. So, uh, Bill and uh, so, what questions, Bill and Gabe, do you have about this? I have none. Okay, Gabe, do you have? I any? don't have any questions at this time. Do you feel like you don't have enough information to vote at this time? I'm willing to do either. It's a and it could be today, it could be next month. It's, it's, um, is it pressing for you, Beth? Um, to get a, to get it a, would just be good to have it done, but okay. have them all done. Um, you know, I can come back and report. I can send a report. Um, I don't see, I mean, I'm happy to, to talk with Alex. I can't imagine that he would commit to being on the green next December. Super but, right. but I'm yeah. happy to talk with him. I yeah, don't have right. any. Problem. And and I don't think there's any thing from the chamber that would preclude opening up to, you know, the hockey team or the whatever to sell food. Yeah. yeah Are we just going that. with nonprofit? No, 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 no. I mean, Alex, <clears throat> okay. um, the Wood okay. of the Woods aren't yeah, nonprofit. True. Okay, true. And because it's not right. nonprofit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Bill, do you have any questions about the application that you're not, do you feel like you need more information? No, I think it's good. Okay. I don't see a need to table it, but I. That's my request. That. I'd like to table it for one month and have better, better talk about it, more complete one. And hopefully have more information. We'll go back to the uh, games question. Does it does it foul you up, Beth, the way the month is it is I mean I think I get Jeffrey's point, this wants more detail. It's, does that uh, foul you up to wait? Can we wait four weeks or whatever it is? Um second Tuesday. What event, my board, my you know, again, the board voted to move forward with this yesterday. Yeah. Jeffrey had asked the board to table it. They voted against that and voted to move forward with it. Um, after they voted to move forward with it, they voted again to move forward with it. Yesterday. You know, Beth, I'm not against the what's going on. I, I really like expanding it to be having more of an activity oriented thing and more food in particular. That's really important. And, you know, the eight artisans uh, plus, plus the distilleries, not objecting to that. I think, I, I think it'd be better for us to wait and hear more next month. It's just, Still, it's 11 months away. Um, by next month, it's not going to hurt anything from happening. What are we going to know next month that we don't know today? We're going to know if we can get more food vendors and what the mix. But of, I don't uh, think we're going to. It doesn't next change month. the application. It says food vendors. I mean, I, I understand. And we also don't about. know what what the business community is going to say. The business community might have some ideas. Um, well, the chief that that could be a part of this i you know I, I, this is just my request you know if you vote it down then and you insist on it happening tonight when it could happen next month fine i don't and i i think it's better to wait one month for this part because this part seems like it could be filled better mm. and i'd like to hear about it i don't think we're going to know about the food until closer towards time. Don't, don't you all agree on that? I would agree. And then as far as it, all right, so what else is Well, how there? would you know about any of the food unless people say yes? Like, I don't know that women... anybody's going to say yes 11 months well, out. Well, Vicki and Shannon have, as well as they've that's they, they said that they would work on a pasta supper with us. Um, so, I mean, people do say agree. Otherwise, yeah, and then they change their mind. <laughs> well, that, that could always that could always happen. Yeah, that could always happen. If you feel like you want to wait a month, I I said I could go either way. It's okay. fine. So whatever the we want to do, it's neither here nor there. You're welcome to make a motion. I move that we wait one month for this just this section of all uh, of the chamber's proposal, and that we vote on it in February. Is there a second? No second. No second. Motion fails. Okay. Um, are there any citizen comments on this permit? Seeing there's none. 
I make a motion to uh, approve the permit for Wassail a weekend on the green December on December 22nd, 27th. Uh, no, December 9th, 2023. Excuse me. Um, is there a second? I second. Discussion. Second. After, can, can we have discussion now before we take the vote? Sure. I want to just be clear of the mix you're having is going to be both for profit, not profit, maximum of 18 craftsmen artisans plus distillers. And how many craftsmen artisans? Eight. Okay. Plus distillers. Uh, That's what I heard. Addition. Yeah, I, I heard 18. Well, no. that needs to be added to the application. Then. Well, I was oh, just trying says, to make it clear. This says up to 25. Yeah, oh, 25 okay. total booths. Okay. Well, and then I, we... and I just want to clarify what I heard best. Did you that say that? In the minutes. She did. No, I I'm will. Beth, if she said that. I was pushed to say eight artisans. I can do eight artisans as well as food. And I guess the question is what is an artisan? Is it crafts? Is it headbands? Is it. I... Food that is not consumable in the moment. So oh. cookies and baked goods that people take away, a no, candy that's purveyor. Food. That's food. A candy purveyor that does nice box of chocolates. That's food. That's but that's not like food. Right? That's, I would, that's not who I meant when I said eight artisans. I mean like Laura White, like potters and jewelers, jewelry, and uh, those kind of are craft artisans. Not distillers, not chocolate, not any of these other things. Those could all be part of the 25, but I heard eight there. I just want it in the minutes. All right, so what you're saying is she can only have eight people that sell jewelry, and after that- she... Not just jewelry, no, but... it's pottery. It's all what you'd call okay. a craft artist, but not, not food. That's an addition that there can be, you know- So somebody can sell a bottle of vodka, and that's not food. Oh, that is food. That is. Okay. That is food. A bottle of vodka is food. What? It's liquid. Well, let me, no, it's let not me, food. It's liquid. Let me read the definition of artisan. It's a worker okay. in a skilled trade, especially one that involves making things by hand. So there you go. There, there you go. That's okay. that's. Well, then that would set a, Somebody yeah. that makes vodka or handmade chocolates is, no. is an artisan. Is an artisan. Yeah. That's. I'm hearing Jeffrey say that he doesn't watch jewelry and craft. Beyond a certain number, and we uh, we already talked about that. You agreed to that, and I'm not, I'm saying that you want 25 boots altogether. I want 25 boots altogether. Okay. That part's not a problem for me. I just want to be clear. Okay, so there's a motion yes. on the floor. Are we, we did not vote? Okay. discuss the yeah. number of artisans. Okay. Yeah. We could go back and do that. We're meeting next Tuesday. Okay. Artisans can can include cheese mongers, things like that. Yeah. Right. Well, so cheese, alcohol, chocolates, crap, um, <coughs> pottery. So during market on the green, there's uh, the rules for market on the green, which can be up to 40 vendors, I believe. Right now it's 35, we're asking for 40. Okay. Yeah, okay. The rules say 20%, maximum 20% can be artisans. Crafts. Crafts. Crafts, okay. not artists. Crafts. Okay. okay. That's the eight I'm talking about. The same thing. The same mm -hmm. rule is on market on the green. Is that on the application of market on the green? That so that's in your so rule. If, if okay. that's market on the green. Yeah. So if that's the same thing, then I don't have a problem with it. The, the thing about the market is that part of it is ruled by NOFA and the mix is 60% agriculture, 20%. No, for the Northeast Organic Farming, okay. which we're part of. So 60% is agriculture, which can be cheese. It can be vodka if you grow your own, whatever it's made out of. Yeah. 20% um, is crafts and 20% is prepared food. Okay. I don't want to belabor. Okay. No, that's okay. No. So, so that's a, it, I saw, I'll, I'll amend what I, what I'd heard was when I met said artisans, I meant craftspeople. 
And that's what Beth said she could do, eight. And then we've got all these other artisans, oak artisans, on top of that up to 24. Did you say eight? I will say eight. If somebody came to me in September and said, oh, but I, we've already got eight and we've got this fabulous something, I could come back. You could always come back. So eight of the 25. So that means that there will be up to no. uh, 13. Right, which includes, includes the Rotary Club and the Chamber, et cetera. Distilleries. The distilleries. Which you, you said you probably have four now. Right? I think we have four, Silo, St. Jay, Killington, there might be another one. And so the distilleries are food. We're going to call them food. Prepared. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't call them food. Or, or call them artisans. Well, they're, call not, them artisans. they're not crafts people. Yeah, but if, the, if they are part of the eight, if four of the eight crafts. <laughs> no, are, no, they're not. They don't have to be part of the eight. I guess I'm trying to figure out what is the issue. Yeah. What, what is, the, is the eight is the crafts people. Okay. That, and Why are we it, limiting it to just eight? If t if ten or twelve people wanted to to have like because the, po the whole point of this, let me you know, is partly is this. Say this again. This year, and we don't know what's going to happen next year, and maybe a recession year also. We certainly people talked about it. This year there was a crafts market at Masonic Hall. Okay. There was a crafts market at the uh, history Oak center. Club. There was a crafts market at Au Comptoir. There were three places for increased shopping already in the village. On a Saturday, that's extremely important to merchants in the village. And now there's going to be another one on the village green. Now I'm simply saying the, the idea is to increase experiences. So I'm looking for a proportion that's okay, have some of it be craftsmen have yet another but leave the rest of it to be other things whether they be activities or these I think that's all great. Or, but that's all i'm yeah. saying but but what did did we get complaints from any of the merchants at um these other independent uh pop-up shops interfered with their their the, profits for the day i'm not saying there were complaints i'm saying that all of them draw from X amount of dollars from people who are here. And we don't know what 2023 is going to bring. We only know what 2022 brought. 2023 is projected to be a different kind of year, according to many experts. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're kind of going on and on to quite an extent where I'm simply saying out of 24 of them, just that one small segment is extremely well covered on that Saturday already in the village. So if we limit that section to eight and have all these other booths, and other things for people to be occupied with, I think that would be a wise thing to do. And are we ready for a vote? The vote's a long discussion here. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, so that would, be an addendum, come back. that would be an addendum to the original motion. I, I make that addendum to your original motion that well, craftsmen be well, limited to eight boots. We need to go back. We'd have to go back and start. Okay. We need to go back and start again. Yes, we've made an so addendum. You got motions. You had a discussion after the motions. You had motions. But you have to, but then do we have to vote on the addendum? Oh. Uh, because he's making an amendment. You, you would have to vote amendment on the amendment. To the actual permit? He's making an amendment to the actual permit. He's suggesting an amendment to the permit. So yeah, do we need to vote on the amendment before we vote on the whole thing? Okay. I'll incorporate it into a motion. Okay, so then we need to vote on the amendment before we vote on the whole thing. So would you like to make a motion on your amendment? Okay. I would like to amend that of the what, 25 booths or 24? It's listed as 25. 25, that um, a maximum of eight be crafts boots, craftsman's boots. Uh, by the definition we've used for market on the green. Same, same kind of same kind of 
enterprise, retail enterprise. Okay. Is there a second? Beth, are you satisfied with that? Yep. Okay. So I second. Second. Now we can revisit it if we well, needed okay. to. Okay. All right. I second that then. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Say nay. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah. You're saying a. You're saying aye. 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 I'm aye or nay? Yes. Yes. Aye. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, then the yeah. amendment passes. Um, so then we'll go back to the original. So the amendment is that out of the. So the new permit says there will be up to 25, and a maximum of eight will be, can be, will be, can be crafts, craft artisans, is that the appropriate term? So, yep. yeah. yeah. non-food crafts, non-food artisans, craft artisans. non-food or beverage, non-beverage or beverage craft. Artisans. And then there has to be something to the effect that uh, the chamber can come back to us to request. That doesn't that's always open. Right? That's, that's, that's always there. That's always open. It's always open. That's always yeah. open. Okay. Okay. Um, so we've had first, we've had a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Bill? Aye. As in yes. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the market on the green. It's on page 12, your packet. I see Nugget is sign off, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Gabe can give my report. Gabe, we talked about the um, goals and, and so forth, yep. right? For the- I, I, so, I reviewed it, it looks great. Yeah, okay, so he and I are on the same page, so he can give the report on that. Okay, thank you. Great, thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Right. Bye. Okay, Beth, talk to us about. Okay, the market on the green is something that has been happening since 2006. Um, it's a farmer's market where actually the published dates will be May 31st through October 11th. Okay, so we a bonus of one week to the vendors if the weather permits. Okay. So we haven't had okay, snow. So. so it, that's the Wednesday, so that's 20 weeks, the Wednesday after um, Columbus Day. We are asking for up to 40 tents, which includes the chamber booth um, as well. We've had additional flower people asked to be there. We're again looking, always looking for prepared food, something that people can either take away or come down and eat. Um, and How many vendors did you have on average? 35. Okay. And they were pretty consistent? Yes. Yes, there were some times when they're not. We had the munch people. So we're going to talk to the woman in St. Johnsbury about oh, how so many. Munchy rolls. They were good if they had only. Yeah. Um, so really, there's no change we met today. Uh, and. And so would you anticipate this going further west down the green? Probably. What about the hours? Um, the same. Three to six. Three to six, the same. Would yeah. you consider staying open later? Probably not. Um, about 6.30. I mean, I, I could say that to the vendors. I mean, it's great high summer before and after it's, you know, you're getting dark. You, even that last one, the bonus round that we gave, we did two, we started at 2.30 to 5.30 so that we were done before dark on the 18th or whatever it was. I assume a lot of them have run out of food too. Welcome to, yeah. 2000. So basically, it's the same it's the as same. always. The rules are the You're same. Right. It's still the the 60 20 20. Right. Um, yes. So I move that we accept you know, the market on the green application as presented. Uh, are there any citizen comments? Okay. Go ahead. I, I think I, I'm okay. as I move. 
Okay, is there any further discussion? Uh, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. And last permit is Art Festival. Yes, the 9th and 10th of September, um, the weekend after Labor Day, before Ed Talks. Um, Oh, they're planning to do it again this year? Yes. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah. Um, that should be coming out this week, too, by the way. The, the ability to. YouTube. Yes. See yes. the TED Talks. That happens. So um, we would like to be able to have the tent set up on the green on the 8th for those who want to set up their tents. Um, and then the 9th and 10th is the actual event from 8 a.m. and um, actually, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. How many people did you have, or how many vendors did you have last? We week? had 25, maybe. Yeah. Yep, and that includes the rotary and a food booth. Okay. Um, we'd like to have up to 40 if we could have 40, you know, high quality artists. Yeah. Um, which I think that we've done pretty well with and that will and the vendors yep and i will just say just to fyi that roger Irwin, who has been part of our um art festival since the beginning is featured in yankee magazine this week oh, with, wow. this month with a i don't know three or four page spread of his wildlife photography it's fabulous so check it out nice And so it's setting up on Friday. Yes, after three, they come, they set their tents up. They don't really bring any product. Well, Andy Schneider might, but. Okay. And do they leave stuff in their tents overnight or do they? they it's use? totally up to them. Okay. Um, our police officers, you know, just do a circle around every, you know, make their presence known via vehicle. Okay. And that's been okay with the artists. Yeah, and then besides if I left things in there overnight between Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. Between Friday night and Saturday. Saturday and Sunday, yeah. Between Saturday and Sunday. Yes. Yeah. And are you using any Crockett Tokens? Crockett normally do anything, or is it? No, he doesn't, except for that, the security. Okay. And you found that the uh, the pedestrians, it's not overwhelming. No, not like the taste of what's not. Okay. So you don't need to worry about parking. It's also after. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> Labor Day. Maybe someday. I don't know. Okay. Well, once again, on the weekend, unlike last year, the elementary school parking lot will was, be available. Wasn't available. That's right. Now it will be, which is, we'll have our artists park there. Yeah. Okay. We're paying for it. We should use it. And we said the same thing about the market on the green, not to go backwards, but certainly the vendors after school is out with park there. Yeah, I think it's just weekends. It's just weekends. We'll double check on that. And I can't be after school. I meant after school. Teachers use the parking lot after school. I meant after school, like. June, oh, yes, yes, July. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. I was, that's I, what I, I, I said. Wednesday, so I was like, no, I don't know that was decided on. No, that's not what I was. Okay. No, no. no. But we can get back to you on that. Yeah, in the summertime, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Uh, I would entertain a motion. To move to accept the uh, art festival as presented in September of 2023. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Beth. Thanks. The like to do is put all of these together. And yeah. Do them. Find volunteers and the easy part. Find food. Remember, you can come to the uh, merchants meeting on the twenty fifth. Yes. Uh, you are remind me. Yeah. All right. Twenty fifth. Yes. I hope to see January. You. Hope to see you before. That. What time? What time? Five thirty. We don't. Well, know. We have. We still have to create the venue. Yeah. And, oh, and we don't know. Here's, where. A, here's a possibility. Yeah. Um, if it's here open, I don't know. 
25th. Can we find out if Wednesday. it's open? Yeah, at 5 30. Yeah, I'll check. Could you, know, could you, could you yeah, yeah, if you, if you could put it on, uh, check with Nikki and let me know. That'd be great, Tom. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Moving on. Um, old business. Uh, we're gonna move. We moved. Okay, we moved town manager goals and objectives up to the top. Okay. Uh, so Bill's gone, but that's fine. Yeah. So okay. uh, Bill and I uh, talked about the, uh, the goals and objectives that. Um, but you, I, I don't know. See, I guess you put it together, or you put it together yes, with sir. someone else. Okay. All right. Um, so um, the thought was that we could make it more concise. And that part of the the initial draft really contained um, things that were already included in the job description for which okay. he posted for the job and we hired him. So it it felt like that would be not not just redundant, but it would also, you know, I don't not verbatim what I said to to Bill, but essentially. Um, we didn't want him coming in and thinking we're just going to micromanage him right off the bat when we've already stated what we wanted in the job description. So it should it should be more in tune with talking about what we'd like him to accomplish and therefore be goals and objectives. So we made it shorter. We made it to the point. And so you, you have both versions there. Um, so this is where Bill and I landed. Um, which I'm comfortable with. I think it's 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 much better. I, the other one just seemed like it was just. It was a lot. Yeah. It was very much. No, but that's track. okay. But that's okay. <laughs> but it just seemed like a lot that we we covered through the interview process that we covered through the the the, the job description. Yeah. Um, Thank you for doing this to you and Bill. Yeah. Um, and this is um, so. This is of course. Uh, this will go after if we make any changes or any recommendations. Um, this will go to the select board. They'll take a look at it yeah. next week. And then, of course, when Eric starts, this is not like a go do it. This is a starting point. Like yeah, a, and, and, and so the, the, the words that uh, Bill and I talked about is that we want this to be, yeah, we want him to be a participant. So we yeah. want this to be collaborative and this tell him where we think the needs are. This is this is what we're thinking, you know, he should work towards, yeah. um, but we'd like his input. And, and so make it more collaborative. Um, I don't know. It's just me. I did. No, that was. That I don't want it to be wasn't big being brother. Very... No, and that's okay. But yeah. it, but uh, I just think it, collaborative is the word that we'd like. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. So, what are the? Can you? We can do it ourselves, obviously. Um, but talk to us. So you took out the things that were sort of that were in the job description. Yeah, and, and I mean that they, they weren't exactly written this, that way in the job description, but. Um, you know, we 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 definitely had them in the in the job description, and we so we took those out, as uh, Bill calls them, the JDs, the job description <laughs> items. So um, we took we took a, a a good number of them out. You can still use them as talking points if you'd like in the in the collaborative conversation. Um, but I thought it it would be nice to you know you don't want to have. 20 goals and objectives because he's not going to achieve 20 things. Yeah. Um, that's just too many. So you want to you want to focus on what's the most relevant. And there's still room. I mean, you can you can say that one or two of these things could still be taken out. And the, the one I don't the mm -hmm. only one I see okay. that I, I'm questioning is uh, when we talk about goals and objectives, mm -hmm. the municipal manager. To uh, ensure the accessibility of all Woodstock homes and businesses to receive emergency services, and, and yeah, that sounds very. Of course, it's a nice idea, but I think we already do that. Yeah, we do. We do. And and it's also the police and fire chiefs' jobs more than the municipal managers. Okay, that's the only thing I would change. Okay, so we could take that out. I'm I'm comfortable with that. I, I'd be interested to see what the um, select board thinks about this because I, I do I'm trying to recall I believe this came from David um so if there's if there's a concern um I would just want to follow but, it, but it's David's concern and it's the police chief's concern I, I don't I don't think I just don't think but it's an overall what you what you're good but if it's something that needs but, to be <laughs> something that the manager is aware of so that it is part of the goals that the comprehensive goals that are being worked towards I don't want to discount it. 
again, these are things. This is this is an evolution. Um, it's a living document, so. Yeah. It, I, so anyway, that's my thought. I just think of all the things here. That's the only one I would take out, and the others are seem much more important for as part of his job. Well, we can put a note on it. Um, to okay, I'm happy to follow up with, with David to get more details so that when it goes to the select board, um, there's more information, and then when we're talking to Eric, we can. I mean, the only thing I can think of, which has to do with David Green, is his, is his him wanting to change that the housing numbers in Wood, in the village of Woodstock. Oh, and well, we haven't had that case. That's, yeah, but that's not the municipal. Yeah, that's that's, not, that's nine one one with with fire, that's, and police, right? Yeah, but it's also making the decision to vote village people, not. I'm just saying it's not. I'm saying I know that's something David's concerned with. Mm -hmm. That's, but that's not the municipal manager's goals and objectives. Um, it's falls it outside of that. Yeah, you, and you can't create that. And last, and and I don't know. I haven't really been in tune with this lately. But the last time I looked at this, it wasn't imminent. So it's nothing that's right. on the horizon. Exactly. And so that's why I, don't, I just don't think it fits in with this immediate. This is this year's your goals and objectives. But I'm I'm, I'm fine taking it out. I'm not married to it. So, Tom, um, what's your thought about it? Oh, it could be a manager's uh, goal if you make it one. Um, but it seems to me that there is already a process has begun at the to, state level yeah. to work on that. As I recall, yes. I was decided at a trustees meeting. We're going to take a few locations that were the worst scenarios and work on them and then keep going from there. That's, so yeah. you can put it in there and just keep it in the forefront. No no harm in doing that. Well, then it needs more. Because none of these have. No. Yeah. This doesn't say this is what we got to do in a year. Right. Years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then we'll get more information. Uh, Okay. And recommend this might not be uh, necessary. So we'll take our notes, pass that on to the select board, and okay. get more information. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any questions? No, I think it's good. Uh, yeah. Thank you for doing this uh, with great. Bill. And then, as you said, we can use the stuff as just talking points. Yeah. And second, third, and fourth level things. Okay. Tom, I don't think we need to vote on this because it's something that's no, no. advisory. Sure. Okay. Awesome. Then let's move on to the next item, which is uh smoke free parks uh sarah are you there um so this is sarah she is from two rivers she's the one that uh sent us the uh is requesting uh an ordinance update of the woodstock village um about uh prohibiting smoking in village parks can you give us sort of an overview and introduce yourself absolutely well? good evening everybody can you hear me all right Yes. Oh, excellent. So my name is Sarah Rate. I work as a senior planner with Two Rivers at Aquichi Regional Commission. And one of the jobs that I do there is I, I assist towns with health policy language um, with the very able uh, partnership of our friends over at Mount Escutney Prevention Partnership. And so we have our friend here, Alice Stewart, here today, who will give you just a little bit of context of um, the kind of work that we, we do with many municipalities around the same sort of um, parks ordinances and a little bit of a context of why these edits are important. So I'll, I'll pass it over to Alice. Thanks, Sarah. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. yes. Great. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I'm Alice Stewart. I'm with the Mount Scutney Prevention Partnership, which is housed within the Community Health Department at Mount Scutney Hospital. And we have to, um, funding from the Tobacco Control Program from the state of Vermont. And so we're using some of that funding to work with our regional planning partners to um, assist towns in making sure that they have 
current um, and comprehensive smoke-free uh, and vape-free parks ordinances. And um, we're currently working, for instance, with the town of Hartford. We're also working with the town of Bethel. Um, we're hoping to be working with Woodstock. Um, so when we took a look at your ordinance, there were a few things that jumped out at us. Um, it was written long enough ago that it doesn't actually anticipate vaping, which obviously is very common right now. So it doesn't cover tobacco substitutes and vaping products. Um, it also doesn't cover cannabis because at the time it was written, you know, legalized cannabis wasn't really thought about. And um, it is illegal to consume cannabis in public, but there's not a lot of um, understanding in the public that that's illegal. So sometimes, even though it's already illegal in statute, we have been advising um, towns to include that in their smoke-free park ordinances to just kind of underscore it. Um, and then the um, there's a couple of parks that are missing because parks have been added since the ordinance was written. And then the other piece is that it doesn't cover disposal, uh, which is really, it only covers smoking. It doesn't cover disposal of products. And um, nicotine has been classified as uh, an acute hazardous waste substance by the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, and in addition to that, um, the um, devices that people use for vaping have lithium ion batteries and they can explode and catch on fire. So if you have parks that have trash receptacles and people are throwing things in those trash receptacles, it could create a dangerous environment for your um, maintenance staff that might be picking that up. Um, I think that's, you know, generally, and, and Sarah can walk you through the recommended um, changes, but that's essentially the things that we saw that we thought you might want to consider updating your, um, your current ordinance so that it's more comprehensive. And the state of Vermont has just updated all of their free signage. So if you want, you can order, um, and we can help you with that, you can order free signs from the state of Vermont. And they do have ones that cover um, smoking, vaping, and cannabis, or you can get ones that are just smoking and vaping. They have all, they, I think they have five or six different alternatives. So, um, and I'm happy to answer any questions um, as, as would Sarah be. Thank you, Alice. So I believe everybody has received the track changes version of the ordinance, is that correct? Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. So as Alice outlined, um, the, the focus of most of these edits here are really around um, the definitions section. And so trying to make those definitions more comprehensive and also in line with statutory understandings of what these products are. Um, and then you'll see, as Alice mentioned, the parks list does need some attention um, and in looking at that parks list, um, Bill Corson recommended adding Billings Park. Thank you for that. We're happy to add that edit in if that would be helpful. Um, I noticed that Mount Peg Park is called out in your town plan, but it's not on this, this parks list. Um, there's also... Park is that? Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Mount, Mount Peg Park is listed in your town plan. Oh, no. So that might be something you want to add. Um, there's also a marsh park listed in your town plan, but I think that might be the same as Teagle Landing, perhaps. Yeah, Teagle Landing. Right. So anyway, so that's that's worth some discussion. As you can see, we've added East End Park and Faulkner Park in there. Um, we've also added some language sort of clarifying because the original ordinance as it's written um, really puts the action, the prohibition in the definition section, which isn't a great way to frame a policy. So we've recommended pulling that sentence out and making it very clear what activity is prohibited. Um, and then we've add so we added some language around uh, signage and then enforcement as well, um, specifically with reference to uh, making sure that enforcement is referencing the appropriate parts of statute. So with that, I'll, I'll uh, pass it over to you all and ask if you have any questions or if there's any other way we can be supportive of you. Um, yes. I kind of, I've, uh, Robbie's back on the line um, and as the enforcer, um, <laughs> I'll actually uh, ask if you have questions or concerns first, or can you talk us through the actual enforcement? One of my questions is gonna be about enforcement. Um, so Robbie, what is your yeah so as the yep the existing ordinance uh, allows us to issue a municipal ordinance violation uh, ticket which is similar to you know your your traffic ticket um, I don't think that the change in this ordinance would change that at all I don't know what the without looking at the ordinance what the what the fine is or was but we can it can be adjusted um, accordingly if it, it's up to you. And then Faulkner, my only point would be uh, great suggestions all the way around. Uh, I think the last policy was actually like a model policy that was presented to us by the uh, 
Mount Scotney Prevention uh, Group. And in any case, Faulkner Park is a private park, so we wouldn't have any jurisdiction over that. That's not a town or village park. And I'm not sure about Billings Park either. When they refer to Billings Park, what are they referring to there? Is that the farm? No, we don't be, have Because I think that would be private property as well. So we yes, would have- Yes, it's private property, but we, you know, at the end we don't, or, and I believe, I'm not sure, but I can look it up. But I, I, I think it's pretty close to what the end does. So we, we, we don't allow any smoking uh, on the property. Sure. But from, from our, from an enforcement standpoint, um, we wouldn't be able to enforce this, the smoking ordinance on private property. Now, if you ask them to leave because they were smoking and they didn't leave, and then you're talking about trespassing, completely different animal, but just in general, we can only enforce what's on public property and public parks. But aside from what they described, I, I think it all sounds very good. And I don't think it'd be a heavy lift to, you, you know, tweak our existing ordinance to make it in line with what they're suggesting or proposing. And, and I, I don't recall this, but um, I, I believe at the, at the state level, if you're talking about even, for example, buildings, aren't we supposed to, if somebody's smoking, there have to be 20 or 30 feet away from that particular building. Is there something? To that effect and is yeah, there so, anything similar to the park or is it just the park itself so with buildings the state um you have to be a certain distance away from state buildings they don't have anything in statute about private buildings um that um that doesn't mean that you couldn't put something in an ordinance if you wanted to the um the research actually shows that secondhand smoke travels 23 feet so generally people that are putting a buffer zone around a building will say 25 feet because it's just a less weird okay. number than 23, but that's where that comes from. It's, it's in actual, um, somebody did some studies about how far smoke travels and, and um, you know, when the wind is blowing or not blowing and all this, you know, on a level of technical stuff. Um, so it's really kind of, um, you know, like for instance, when we worked with, um, we recently did some work with um, a Scutney Outdoors for their, um, you know, they're a nonprofit and they had the same sort of thing where they were talking about the buildings and they decided not to do something specific about that because they were just saying all the property that they control would just be smoke free and they just decided that was the easier way to do it. Um, but obviously, if you're looking at um, like the town of Hartford was talking about their town buildings and like whether or not there was, you know, they wanted to do something around that. So that's kind of a different piece and that wasn't included in these updates, but we can absolutely assist with that sort of thing if you want to go that direction. Um, I've got a, a couple of questions. Um, so one of them is an enforcement question. Um, the first one is there's there's an exception for um, delivery things that are recommended by a doctor. Am I reading that right? How is that if if a police officer said, you know, if Robbie walked up to somebody on the green and said, you're not allowed to do that. And they said, it's recommended by my doctor. Is it like an ADA thing where you can't ask? So or do they have to? Talking about nicotine patch or that's, that's about a nicotine patch. So when you okay. say that somebody can't use one of these nicotine containing products, it doesn't mean that you can't use a nicotine patch or like lozenges or gum. Okay. If it's prescribed by a doctor. But if there's something else prescribed, I don't know, are there ever, like, are vape pens ever prescribed by a doctor? Is that a thing? Not that I'm aware oh, okay. of. Well, and, doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I think you still wouldn't be able to necessarily use it in public, because, I mean, some people have a doctor that prescribed cannabis. It's still illegal to use cannabis in public. Okay. So. Okay. And then this adds um, different offenses for people who are 21. Um, is that, so that's already something that exists where you're just putting it in here as a clarification? Yes, that's a statutory um, specification with regard to underage use. Okay, so that's not new. It's just, it's, you added it in here as a reminder of what already exists or? Correct, just to, just to clarify. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, 
we already talked about Faulkner and Billings, not our jurisdiction. And I've talked to a couple of people who have no idea what the gore is. So unless somebody knows what the gore is. <laughs> yeah, what's the gore? Yeah. They don't know either. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, our office took a look at your town plan and and we didn't know either. <laughs> yeah. And there's no such park called the Gore. So so whoever wrote it originally knew what it was. Because <laughs> no, we'll take it out because we don't nobody seems to know where it is. Yeah. Well, and you can also use language. Are they referring? <laughs> sorry, sorry, for the gore, are they referring to underneath the Elm Street Bridge where there's a swimming hole? Well, oh, I've know. never heard oh. that called the gore. Mm. Me, me, that... me either, but that's the only thing I could think of. No. I mean, is that a park? No, it's not a park. No. no. Is it a recreational I mean, area? Recreational. Yeah. yeah, if it's, it's a, a town of land, area, like any part of the oh. river could be. But smoking definitely happens there. <laughs> could be, but it could happen. It could be, oh, could, yeah. could be north yeah. of it. Mm. It's a popular place for teenagers. Uh, but if it's not a park, then it's not included in here. And then because my other concern is just the uh, the redundancy of the cannabis because it's already illegal. And I, so why are you recommending putting it in here if it's something that already exists? Because most people don't understand that it's actually illegal. And so it's part of a consumer education, um, like resident community member education piece. That's the same reason that it's being added to the signage that's for free from the state of Vermont. Even though it's signage from the tobacco control program that doesn't have anything do, to do with cannabis, they added it to the signs in the redesign because it is an issue in places, um, <clears throat> other states where they've legalized cannabis where it's illegal to smoke it in public is there's not a lot of public knowledge that it's illegal to use it in public. Okay. But the, but the public doesn't, okay. they, they don't read the ordinance. <clears throat> I, mean, I, can no, right. I can understand your point about the sign. Robbie? Yeah. Yeah, I would just say that by putting that in the ordinance, that would help facilitate enforcement. If we were to write a ticket, we can write it under the uh, village ordinance statute, which would then make sure all of the monies would go directly to the village. So uh, I think it's just a, it's a bonus to have it in there. Okay. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Then. Okay. That's fine. Um, is there any public comment about this topic? I have one I have one concern out of the whole thing. Yes. And uh, it's, it's, and it's interpretation. We have been working very hard in Woodstock and, and yet over the years we, we fail because there's always something which like more signs, more signs, more signs. We want less signs, less signs, less signs. That's been in the policy. So I don't really like it, the word prominent, or I don't know how to, I don't know how to change the word so that it's, yes, there'll be signs placed where they can be read, but I do not want big signs. I, I, and our parks generally have no signs, or very few signs. Now we do have some parking kiosks and things like that, and that might be an appropriate place to put something um, on the Village Green, biggest, our, one of our main parks. Is there, we could find some place at least that, but- Or maybe a trash can or where the some, dog yeah, bags are. Yeah, somewhere, but uh, we do not want to increase prominent signage. Um, so can we take out the word prominent and just say signs shall be placed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd mean, I, I prefer that. I would agree. Dave. I'm fine with that. Robbie, does that make your life any harder? <laughs> no, and because you know what? Nine times out of 10, it's more of an educational thing for us. If somebody's smoking in a park, um, we tell them you can't do that. And if they extinguish, I'm not, we're not going to obviously issue a ticket in that case. If they don't, then we enforce the ordinance. Um, so to have a, I guess if you, if you had, <clears throat> signs placed maybe on a, on sign posts that are already there maybe yes um like we did with the parking kiosk we get we had the smaller signs uh made instead of those big ones it was for the app actually <clears throat> you could do something like that they may have different sizes that they'll provide as part of the grant i don't i don't know 
And you said these signs are for free from the state house. Yeah, and there's there's two sizes, eight and a half by eleven or twelve by eighteen. I mean, obviously, you could also make your own signs. Most people yeah. like the free signs, and there is actually even a place if you want to put your um, logo on it. So if you wanted to put the, um, the Woodstock Village logo on the sign, you could do that as well. You know, if if you're interested, I can um, we can get you a copy of the the order form so you can see what they look like. But um, you know, the other thing, just to go back to what Robbie said. One advantage of signage, whether it's big or small or whatever, is that it allows a little bit of self-policing. Like some people will see the sign and go, oh, I'm not supposed to do that here. In other cases, other community members will use the sign and they'll point at the sign to highlight for somebody that they're doing something they're not supposed to. And a lot of times people will just stop and it doesn't even have to be a police enforcement thing. You know, I think they somebody did some study and something like it works like 75% of the time just to have a sign up. You know, that, it, it, that, that will decrease the number of people that are smoking and vaping in public if there's just a sign that says you're not supposed to do that here. And Robbie, are you- Alice, do they have um, stickers as well? I I'm sorry, I just had a question know. for Alice. Do they have stickers? I don't know, but you know, we- okay. Cause we could put, yeah. I was gonna say, we have some money in our budget. So if it was something that you wanted, we might be able to pay for the design if they don't have something like that. So, um, because yeah, that's a, a sort of a more subtle, you know, way to do it and um, could be very appropriate in certain circumstances, you know, rather than some big sign. So yeah, um, we can certainly talk about that. That'd be great. So we can just say sign shall be placed great. and then Robbie, uh, you can, this is your purview, <coughs> you and the town manager can figure that yeah, out. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So the changes that we're making is taking out that word prominently. We're removing the gore. We're removing Faulkner Park. Um, and I believe that's all we're changing. Yeah. Well, we're uh, building tomorrow. So. But yeah, that was a suggestion. Okay. Mount Peg. I think we have to find out. Is Mount Peg public? Is it part, part of it is public. And part of it's private, though. Part of it's private. Part of it's the inn. Yeah. Part yeah. of it's part of it's public. The public part is the only part that we uh, uh, I don't even know where it ends and starts. I, I pretty much do, but it's it's never going to be policed. You is it the picnic table? You could include, All you could do is you could you could post the signs at the trailheads, and that would probably be the best you could do there. Okay. Okay. So we'll add, add Mount Peg to this then. Mount Peg Park. Mount Peg. Okay. Public. Public section of Mount Peg. Okay. So adding Mount Peg, taking out Faulkner, taking out the Gore, taking out the word prominently, and everything else stays the same. Any other changes? <clears throat> okay. I would entertain a motion. Second. Okay. I'll make the motion to accept the uh, to accept the smoke-free parks. Ordinance updates uh, with the um, changes that changes that I just listed off. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. I'll go ahead and send that revised version to Seaton after this call. Okay. Thank you. Sarah, can you include my um, email just so they have it, so that if they want to do something with stickers or signs, we can take care of that later. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Thank I'll make you sure all. I get to the packet. Great. Thank you very much. Have a Thank good night. You. Bye. Okay. Last, last item on the old business is review of sidewalk study. Brenda and Jeffrey. Yeah. So uh, Brenda and I spent quite a long time walking the routes that had been covered by the uh, planning commission uh, in terms of uh, sidewalk extensions, the village of Woodstock. What we found was that the one one major part of what they had done was was a, a failure to take into account in the rec their recommendations those areas that are more more uh, highly traveled versus those that are not well traveled. And Brenda and I believe that that's an important issue in terms of where we would put our or recommend putting resources first. In, in areas that they say are poor, 
but uh, are also heavily traveled versus ones that they say are oh, poor, also poor or very poor, yeah. but between two houses that are not anywhere near the center part of the village, it wouldn't be a priority, put it that way, in our opinion. And so we have a list, but what I'm recommending, and Brenda, let me know if you agree, is that we uh, go into this in detail when we have our new manager here, and wait until then, um, because next month. Till next month. Yeah. Okay. And but put it on next month's agenda because we may want to get start action pretty early on in order to line up the contract. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we want to bring in Mark as well. New manager, and I think that's the best way to proceed. Go through the details then, as opposed to tonight. Yeah. What do you? What, do you uh, what kind of sidewalks are you talking about? Concrete or uh, asphalt? No asphalt. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the number one. That, you know, one example. I'll give you one example out of this whole out of this list. It's not because it's so traveled so often. From the elementary school to Vale Field, mm. the asphalt on uh, the westerly side is is in bad shape. On the easterly side, it's not in such bad shape, and people have fallen there. Um, and it possibly has children on it. It has children on it a lot, even after the weather's turned cold up to a point. Uh, going to Vale Field. Um, anyway, so that's one of the ones we moved up versus their list, just to give everyone an example, because <laughs> of who's using it and how often. Mm -hmm. You have about $164,000 of ARPA money. That's the ideal property to spend it on. Yes, yeah, and, and we had already discussed that that would be an ideal use for that, those ARPA funds. Wasn't there also a chunk of um, edging that was missing? Yes, but I, yeah, that's another detail along yeah. that whole along there. That makes it one, more there's dangerous. one section that doesn't have a curb. Hmm. It's very short. So it wouldn't be hard to include it. But yeah, that's okay. along that same stretch. Thank you guys for and then and, then, for and, and we'll have and we'll have we have the rest of the list that will okay. go over. I don't think tonight. Yeah, it's okay. So just to give yeah. uh, some credit well, to the study. I think a lot of the areas that they uh, indicated were poor were evaluated before last year's paving. Yeah, because I did the same thing. I went out and yeah. I took the study. Actually, Mark and I did went out and we looked around. These have just been paved. Yeah, yeah, we found that we found that yeah. out too. Okay. Yeah, but there were some areas that are like this doesn't even need to be on there. Yeah. So the ones that we identified were all ones that they had on their list, yeah. but. Not necessarily in the order that they have. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you guys. Next item on our agenda is going to new business, uh, planning for the village meeting. Um, so the village meeting is scheduled for 21. February, March, March 21. March thank you. So March 21. Um, which means we need to start planning for it. Um, according to our town clerk, I bring up this email. Do you make copies? What's up? Do you make copies of that email that Nikki sent out? Or maybe you didn't see it. No, I don't think I saw it. How about if I make copies? Yes. So according to Charlie, that means that uh, ballots have to be ready by March 1st. So that they have to be ready by his office so that people can take them by March 1st. And any petitions for special articles are due by February 13th. <coughs> Those petitions are available in his office. And then for people who wish to run for office, uh, it's the same same date. The voting date is what date? Is is that is March twenty first? So March twenty first is village meeting day. And it's also the voting. Yeah, 
but if anybody wants to submit, uh, so the ballot has to be ready by March 1st, so he has to have it out and available by March 1st. Perhaps that means any petitions that people want for special articles need to be right to him need to be added by the 13th. But of course, we have to approve those as well. Oh, thank you. It's perfect. Yeah, and here's, a, I have a question. Um, get, are we going to meet in the main auditorium or are we going to meet our, we've had village meetings over the years, both venues, uh, size of people who attended, like last year, this would have been sufficient. Um, on the other hand, if it's COVID issues, it can spread out further. But it feels very empty. Mm -hmm. I'm just bringing it up. Well, and we're no longer allowed to do it on Zoom because that statue has uh, expired. Mm -hmm. So it has to be. Do you know if we're allowed to also just for viewing purposes? We can Zoom for viewing purposes, presumably. People just can't interact. Yeah, I think it might be difficult to interact. Don't you know I don't, I don't know that you're allowed to interact if you're not physically there. Because the it's been done, but it's difficult to do. And they're doing COVID sometimes we're doing it. But I don't know how exactly they do I just it. didn't I wasn't sure if that if we were allowed to since the ordinance since the emergency order expired. Mm. Mm, that could be cool. Well still that doesn't cover where we're gonna do it. Right. Okay. No, I was just bringing that up. Uh Dave, Brenda, what do you think? I think you're fine. I think in this room, I'm I'm fine here too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, my preference is here. I think it's a better meeting because there's a smaller number of people. Mm -hmm. Feels yeah. interactive. Yeah, I'm all for that. I just wanted to bring it up because yeah. last year we held it downstairs. Robbie, do you have any? Are you still on the line? <coughs> No, I'm no. here. I'm here. Sorry. Oh, um, do you have any preference on that? Just public safety stuff? No. Okay. How many people can this room hold? There's a sign here somewhere. So there's a We've had standing room only okay. in this room <laughs> in the past. Standard, it's over there. Oh, no? I thought there was a sign. There was a sign. I don't know. That many people I got. Okay. Out. Well, as long as it's less than whatever that number is. I'm fine I mean, having it's, it here. It's, it's easy to get 50 people in here. Very easy. Yeah. Without it being too crowded. And we're not likely to get 50 people. But it's democracy in action. We can always move downstairs if we get overloaded. It's true. That? Okay. I'm fine with it being here. Okay. Um, so that means that we can wait until our next meeting Yay. to approve the ballot. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. But I think you have a meeting on the 14th and you need to have them done by, well, you have to post your warning, last day to post warning on the 17th. It's gotten it close. But it, I don't know, special meeting. So the last day there can be, they can, for the, the people can submit their names for office is the 13th. Uh, we don't have to worry about that because we don't have to approve that part. It's the February 2nd, right? So February 2nd is the deadline for petitions to be on the board. So do we, once all the petitions come in, by February 2nd, you then have to approve the ballot at that point. You can wait until the fourth. You have a meeting on the 14th, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can wait till then. Do it earlier? Well, it would be better. Okay. It would definitely be better because that's the side there. So we could schedule a meeting quickly from the staff standpoint. So if that has to come in on the 2nd, if we gave the Charlie enough time to 
assemble all those things and anything that your office needs to do. Yep. Can we do a special meeting on the 7th? Just to approve not. the ballot? I, I can't, I won't be. You're not going to be here on the 7th? Oh, okay. Not gonna be here. Yeah. I love your tchotchkes. Well, we could do it. Are you here on the 6th? No. Okay. On the 4th or the 7th. <coughs> well, we could do the ninth. Yeah. One point for you. No, no problem. Gabe, Brenda, could you do the ninth special meeting? Uh, so I don't see why not. Okay. That's pretty short. Yeah, that should just be approving the ballot. So we could do that like at eight thirty in the morning. Or we something. could do that in the morning. Did you guys do eight thirty in the morning? Mm -hmm. Sure. What day is that? The ninth. Say the ninth. Yes. How long would that take? Shouldn't take more than fifteen minutes. Are we talking about the ballot or the warning? We're talking about approving. Well, it's, it's the same information, right? It is, but the ballot is made after the warning is approved, and the ballot does not have to be approved because it's the same information. We've yeah. never approved the ballot. So, the, uh, so then I'm sorry. The, it was only the warning. Yeah. Okay, because the warning doesn't have to be actually out until the 17th, and I do the warning, not Charlie. Okay. Um, so, I mean, that is, it's fine if you want to wait to your regular scheduled meeting. I'm fine with that, but it is okay. up to you. Okay. Let's do that. Then. Okay, well, then it's the 14th. Thank you, Nikki. You're welcome. Okay, so we will just put that onto our regular agenda. Okay. You also have the the petitions for special articles, or is that Charlie? So it's it's weird because of how it works. Because he's the town clerk, the petitions all come to me, but then I have to verify the signatures through him. So it's kind of a joint process between both of us. Okay, but if somebody wants a petition for a special article, they come to you. Correct. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, and can we get all of these? Um, I'll make sure that we get the dates for the deadlines to be on the website somewhere so that people know what to do. Well, I don't think you want them all on there. Well, no, just the the deadlines for the petition. Yeah. So people are aware of that and where to come. Right. Uh, okay. Okay, does anybody have any other questions about the meeting we can get more into details next month okay excellent so next item is the village report cover and dedication um was, jeffrey had an idea i have an idea that um i would really like to dedicate this village report to our our chief of police who has done such a good job for us for so many years it's about time we Acknowledge Let him. people know that that's that we we feel that way. So I would I would say Robbie Blish, so I would like to see us dedicate the village report. I love it. Gabe, Brenda? I'm fine. Okay. okay so now, I would love a motion. Oh I don't I don't think we need Do we, to oh, make I don't a motion. Need to. Okay, that's fine. We need to make the decision. Okay. Um, so then we do it as much as that. Well that's that's <laughs> Uh, I hadn't thought about the cover. The cover could in the past has been a variety of things. It's not always the person that we've dedicated to that can be on the inside along with a picture, but um, or it could be on the outside. So, it's up to how you want to do it. The uh, often beautiful image of Woodstock is on the outside. Done recently, you know, East End Park. We've done the Village Green with the new lights. We've done different things like that. Anybody have a burning desire for this on the cover? I don't know a big desire that then it'd be a, a nice image, whatever's chosen. Picture of unicorn. <laughs> when I retire. All right. Or maybe <laughs> you're full of picture, 45. Or maybe when I hit 50. How about a picture of the new um, emergency uh, services building? Oh, did, did we? 
Uh, was, that was on the town report. Was, oh, that's right. no, I wasn't on the village. Don't you have a village report here? Yes, it's right there. Yeah, and this was a collage uh, with, uh, you know, Adrian Tanz's work. Oh, yeah. Uh, plus the new lights that we had. Oh, that's on, right. Uh, so those. those were, that's what we did. But uh, if you wanted to wanted the emergency service for this building, I think the town yeah. had okay. it. Um. We give it some thought. Yeah. You can make that decision all on your own. Yeah. Second. Love his work. He does fantastic work. Uh, okay. So that is a TBD, but we'll say it's dedicated to Robbie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on. Other business. Is there any other business to come before the trustees? People at home on Zoom, do you have any other business? Okay, and we don't have any minutes to approve this one. No, so I move for adjournment. Oh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all.